It's time someone finally said it. The bison is too strong, and most importantly, blatantly overpowered when used on stairs and ramps. This is why I must commend Val for taking action and doing what must be done. On Gullywash, if you try and fire the bison on this ramp, the projectile gets instantly deleted. The bison definitely needs more nurse, but why is this happening? Here are two beach balls. If I shoot one of them into the other, how does the game know the two balls have collided? One solution is to constantly simulate the physics of the two balls upon each other. But physics simulations are resource intensive, so you would only want to run them when absolutely necessary. Things would also get extremely bad with more balls. So instead, the game uses bounding boxes, a simple box drawn around objects to approximately determine when to care about it. Before any physics are simulated, the game first uses the more efficient bounding boxes to check if the two balls are touching. If they're not, do nothing. If the two bounding boxes are intersecting, then we start simulating physics. This method of handling collisions extends to basically everything, so anything that needs to interact with other objects is given a bounding box, such as players and most objects on a map. In addition, Projectiles also make use of this system. Rockets have two functions that handle collision that are activated whenever the physics system sees that the projectile has intersected another bounding box. One that handles collisions while flying through the air, and one that takes care of what happens when the projectile touches something. The midair collision checker seems to be a relic from older code, since it essentially does nothing. All it does is check if the projectile has hit the ground. Presumably, this bit of useless code is kept to prevent older parts of the physics engine from breaking. And for the touch function, it looks at what the rocket has touched, and makes a decision on what the rocket should do. For example, if we hit water, don't explode. If we hit the skybox, simply delete the rocket. And if we hit a wall, explode. For the bison, its midair collision checker is different. Anytime the midair collision checker is activated, it deletes the bison projectile. This means that every time the physics system thinks the bison projectile might need to fizzle out, such as every time it passes through something's bounding box, it agrees and immediately deletes itself. While rockets would double check if it really should explode by verifying the thing it has collided with, the bison would accept any suspicions raised. This isn't actually an issue in most cases, since the bounding boxes are generated as the smallest possible box to encapsulate its contents. So trusting the physics system is usually fine, but of course, emphasis on usually. In theory, if there ever happens to be a situation where the bounding box of something is dramatically mismatched with its real physical self, the bison would look kinda silly. Maybe if an object on the map has a much larger bounding box than it should, these wooden beams and the detailing underneath the platform are all individually quite small, but they've been grouped together so the game considers them as one object, creating this seemingly excessive bounding box. The last component to this shitstorm is that these objects are also set to solid. If the objects weren't set as a solid, the bison would work fine. The planks here are also grouped together as one object in the same way, creating this big bounding box but they're non-solid, so the bison continues to function properly. For reference, there's normally absolutely nothing wrong with grouping objects. It's purely done for the sake of organization while mapping. Likewise, there's also nothing wrong with setting objects to be solid. That's how the game knows what you can and cannot walk through. But I must say, Valve is truly omniscient. In their infinite wisdom, They've identified that red players are much better with the bison than blue. So on the red side, this bounding box is actually even larger and goes all the way out to the rock. This appears to be a really stupid mistake to make, but to their credit, if it weren't for the broken midair collision checker, the bison would work fine. At close range, presumably because the midair collision checker hasn't kicked in yet, the bison actually works as it should. There also seems to be a bigger issue beneath the surface. 
and the bit of code they wrote to redefine the Bison's midair collision checker to simply delete itself. They left a comment stating, Remove by default. Fixes this entity living forever on things like doors. So it seems there were some other spaghetti monsters in the code that were trying to avoid, and this was the best they could do. This issue affects the Bison, Palmson, Dragon's Fury, and Ramp Assassin whenever there is a solid funk lot object. Outside of Gullywash, I found some humorous spots where it's an issue on Barn Blitz. At this point, I was supposed to end the video, but of the four affected weapons, one is not quite like the others. How is it that, first of all, the Ramp Assassin is broken here, but in addition, the Bison works fine? It seems to be because the Ramp Assassin ball is handled entirely by the physics simulator. All projectiles ignore a bunch of bounding boxes by default, since they will never interact with them. Physics objects have the potential to interact with a lot more things than a projectile might, so by default they ignore a lot less of the bounding boxes. One bounding box the projectiles ignore and the physics objects don't appears to be dynamic props, which leads us to the bad water problem. Opening up bad water and hammer, it turns out the thing that the rap assassin is colliding with is the bounding box of the fucking explosion animation that plays when the cart reaches the end. There is however a slight hint of sanity. This only happens on payload explosions that also need to be set as a solid, which is set this way for boxes or barrels that get flung around that the player should collide with. This also happens, but to a much lesser degree on Snowy Coast, for example. And maps that have explosions that don't produce any solid objects, such as Barn Blitz, don't have this issue. And for the next logical question, why doesn't this happen to the Sandman as well, which work in the same way as the Wrath Assassin does? The difference there is that, almost exactly like how the rockets double check what it touches, the Sandman checks to see if the thing it hit is a valid target before doing anything. For whatever reason, the Wrath Assassin doesn't perform that double check. And that concludes the story of one of the billion Source Engine Spaghetti Monsters. And you have no visibility into why that's happening. It's just sort of magically running 